welcome back it's niche and it's the second episode of laughing and crying i am so excited so i told you i was gonna do it i have somebody in the building you feel me my husband is here um dre Durbin's in the building what up say hello to the people what up what up (laughs) Yeah, he's here. He's going to be hanging out with us this episode. And, you know, it's going to be what else, you know? So we're going to kick it off, Dre, by asking some questions. How you feel about that? Cool, cool. I'm ready. I'm ready. I just want the people to get to know you. So we're going to ask a couple icebreaker questions that are going to be kind of cool. Let's see how you respond. All right, shoot. All right. <laughs> When's the last time you laughed so hard you thought you were going to pass out? Yeah, so the last time I laughed so hard I thought I was going to pass out is typically every time we have a conversation in the afternoon, either when you're distracted or when I'm distracted, especially when you're asleep. <laughs> what do you mean when I'm asleep? <laughs> You know that sleep where you're not really asleep, but your body is, but your mind isn't. So you wake up and you say something so off wall. Everyone knows you're crazy. Not crazy. I have to walk the dog. We don't have a dog. <laughs> but okay. And then it's, yeah, let's go to bed. Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay. Hilarious. <laughs> um, What did you do when you were a kid that drove your parents crazy? Uh, what did I do that drove my parents crazy when I was a kid? I could definitely say as active as my mind was, always being adventurous and risky, whether it was jumping off the bookcase that I landed on the sofa and knocked it over and got a whooping for, or the time my dad bought me a pair of boxing gloves and I thought I was Mike Tyson. I knocked out a window pane. Yeah. What? <laughs> those, went the, those went in the trash real quick. Okay, my husband, ladies and gentlemen. All That's right. That's me. <laughs> anyway. All right, one more, because I just want to get... I'm just curious. That's <laughs> what you're going to say to this. Um, If you could either only brush your teeth for the rest of life or <laughs> wear a deodorant for the rest of life, which would you choose if it were either or? Brush my teeth for life. If I live clean and exercise right, my body scent will naturally go away. And it won't bother you except for when I'm detoxing at first. But if my breath stink, that's for life. My teeth will fall out and then my mouth will smell like gums. <laughs> <laughs> Brush your teeth, y'all. We can get over the body scent. Can we, though? We can. Because some people be smelling like onion patches. I just have to tell you, stop eating so much garlic and onions. But That's not always the case. Some people just naturally smell like onion patches. Mm. You never been around somebody who didn't shower? I do my best not to be around those people who don't shower. I mean, lucky for you, I have... Not had the same type of luck and have been around people who didn't shower and they B.O. smells. That mouth smell is worse than <laughs> body odor. I tell you that much. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to help you. Don't ask for help. Don't ask for suggestions. I can't give you any advice. My eyes water. My nose twins. It's a lot. It's a lot going on up there. Fair. <laughs> First impression is everything. Fair. <laughs> I cannot. I really cannot. Okay, I'm trying to think of what I would choose. I think I would have to go with the brushing as well, but for different reasons. I would go with the brushing because hygiene of the mouth. Like, I don't want to lose my teeth. And I think if you don't brush your teeth, you would eventually lose them from cavities and gum disease. Whereas nothing necessarily bad is going to happen to you in that regard. If you don't wear deodorant, you'll just stink and maybe lose a couple friends. But... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't think you're gonna like get weed disease of the armpit. <laughs> weed out the weak ones. There you go. 
that can't stand your strong smell? Love covers a multitude of sins. Anyway, we're going to move on. <laughs> we're going to move on to one of my favorite segments called Let Me Tell You a Story. I love it. And today, you know, I tell my random stories, but today I'm going to get Dre to tell a story. And he is completely caught off guard right now, and I love it. So, <laughs> so I want you to tell the people the story of getting the nerve to ask me out. Skirt, skirt! <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's Stop. just me. So random, yeah. It's okay. Uh, I saw what I wanted, yeah, so I went for it. It's not true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I analyzed it for the first time in my life. Like, should I shoot my shot? Okay, so how did it start? So we met a little bit of how we met is we met online okay so take it from there how am i telling the story right okay i'm trying to give you a pivot point (laughs) go ahead so we met online (laughs) we met online and we just had a good random conversation i knew not to ask simple questions but i also knew i didn't have many questions to ask i think i asked something kind of abstract from normal conversation not the hey how are you doing what's going on i think i asked legitimate questions that had for for clarity guys he asked me what my favorite rom-com was (laughs) there you go you know stuff that matters you know uh in that i understood that i enjoy the conversation i didn't know that it would lead all the way down to marriage at first but at the same time i knew it was something special and i wanted to meet her um, eventually I got the nerve up to ask, like, Hey, you want to go out sometime? Uh, all gas, no brakes. <laughs> so tell us the story. What happened when you asked me out? Uh, did you expect me to turn you down when you asked me out? Initially? Yeah. <laughs> I did think that like, maybe she would, you know, do it gently, you know, like, eh, like, I don't know about this week and, you know, press it off until either I lost interest or I caught the hint. I never catch the hint. That's the clue. <laughs> so I persisted and persisted. So you play dumb on purpose. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know. And I just wanted to know how deep her commitment to no was. You know, <laughs> that's all. It was, a, it was a battle of the wheels, if you must. Uh, You're ridiculous. And yeah, she said, yeah. And we went out. And now... We still together. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so that now is let's his... go to niche for the truth. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is his version about how you got the nerve to ask me out, and that's his version, guys. Um, but I brought you on here for a reason, not just to hang out. I brought you on here because I want to talk about something that I think we all kind of know about but are probably still a little bit unsure about that you kind of went on a journey the last two years of wrestling with and growing towards and that's vulnerability yeah yeah and I just think it's I just think it's kind of interesting because I'm talking to you and you're a male who went on this journey and I'm not trying to be sexist out here, but I do understand that men usually have a little bit of a harder time saying this word, wrestling with this concept, right? So I just felt like your perspective in the world is going to be an asset to the people. And I am grateful that you're even willing to come on the podcast and even talk about it. So that's great. And that's cool. I think I want to start asking you though, um, what is like vulnerability in your own words? Weakness. I'm, no, just kidding. Stop. I'm going to read the, I'm going to read the actual definition after, but I just want to know what you see it as, right? Vulnerability in my own words, I would say is the ability to let your guard down so low that it's pretty much not there. 
and that's your guard and everything in your finances and your communication and your love life. If you're married, your sex life. Remember <laughs> that, y'all. <yeah. laughs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> but also be involved. Not out here judging the people. <laughs> the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord. <laughs> No, but being vulnerable is letting your guard down to the point that you have no guard um, in er in areas of your life in which you choose to, um, which should be all areas. But in, in time that comes, it's not a race. It's a journey. Walk it out as best you can when you can. That's vulnerability. Okay. And just to add more context to that, um, Google or we used to say Webster's Dictionary defines it. The prophet right. Google, ask him anything. <laughs> is the quality of or state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed, either physically or emotionally. And that's deep. Yeah, do y'all think I won that one? I hit that one square on the head, huh? Uh, I think I matured. So the quality of state of being exposed... That's dope. That's deep, though. And do you feel like it's hard? Of course it's hard. It's not natural. It's not natural for for us as people. And then it's even harder for us as adults. As children, it's the easiest thing to do. We're the most honest, the most loving the most giving, caring, thoughtful, considerate. But as we get older in life, usually life experiences cause us to use a little more wisdom in certain things that we do. And we lose that ability to be vulnerable because we learn protection more or self-preservation more than uh, vulnerability. So like the willingness even to be exposed, you feel like it's lost as we get older do you feel like how do you feel like that affects you like as a man like just like the thought of like the willingness to be exposed in the 21st century now we're learning there's no true definition of what it takes to be a man although we were all pretty much raised up until this point of this image of what we thought a man was and it was we don't share our feelings we suffer in silence we don't let our emotions go, we, we stick to our guns. But we learn now that in being vulnerable, we can put our swords down and our shields down and we can live in our truth. And in our truth is our freedom. And it's okay to say you struggle with things in life. It's okay to say you need help. Why do you feel like that exposure is something that you feel that men don't embrace? It's something about being that naked to the world, to yourself, to other people, that even in real life, your nakedness is something that you like to keep private. So exposing yourself as an adult with even more issues, even more scars, if you want to use that metaphor, it's hard to bear that body to the world. So you protect yourself, you keep yourself covered, whether it be in a bad, negative way, maybe it can be pushing people away or only allowing people to get but so close. It may be having the mindset, the mentality of, I can take care of my problems all by myself and mm. I don't need to reach out. Yeah, It may come in different forms and fashions, but like they say, there's freedom and unity. You're going through something that someone else has either went through or is currently going through and it may be solved if you just become more vulnerable ask a question be honest with your friends ask them how they're doing and let it not be a natural response to say hey i'm good tell the truth yeah vulnerability another word for vulnerability is truth or honesty i like that and i would even piggyback on it's not like just truth, right? It's there's something deeper in there. It's truth, but it's also like truth that's uncovered, right? Um, and the thought that you're having to even like dive deep into yourself in order to share with someone else what you may be feeling or thinking or whatever. Well, Brene Brown, I don't know. Are you familiar with Brene Brown? I am not. Well, she 
is pretty dope and she's an author and a speaker she's done ted talks and on netflix and all that but she said something about vulnerability she said it's to be afraid and courageous in the same moment and not either or like how do you feel about like that like being afraid and courageous in the same moment yeah it's a pretty good metaphor i think that's the truth it's being aware of the danger that comes in it yeah but being brave enough to say i'm gonna take the chance on it whether it be for the person that you're being vulnerable with or for yourself in the person that you're being vulnerable with it may come in the form of having a hard conversation with a friend or a loved one or finally having a conversation with your parents i guess there are people out there who say like you know i have great friendships i don't need to be vulnerable to have better relationships or my marriage is fine like i don't need to get all deep because there's a reality that there are people out there who think vulnerability is weakness or uh something that they should be ashamed of or you know what i mean like along those lines and so it's like what do you say to the person that is saying like I'm not weak. I'm not afraid. I'm not a little kid. I don't let anybody in my business. I don't let anybody too close to hurt me. So I don't need it. I don't need vulnerability. I don't need to do that. What do you say to that person? That again is just another defense mechanism. (laughs) uh, Which says they're not used to being vulnerable. And again, fear stops vulnerability. Shame and guilt. Possibly or other factors that could make you not desire to be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, And saying certain statements lets you know. If you say you don't need to be vulnerable, I'm pretty sure it's just your brain protecting itself because you've never asked anyone else, hey, do you think I am vulnerable? Which ways could (laughs) I be more vulnerable with you? Wow. And then you could have a true assessment of what you may or may not need. Yeah, that's good. What would you even say? Because, you know, we've been through our own things and you've been through, you know, stuff on your own in which you've come, you know, guys, he's come like a long way in just vulnerability. And I'm not trying to say if you're, he's come a long way, like I haven't had any you know, growth in that area. I, I have for sure. I don't think that I was the most vulnerable, but I think it's always something that I've leaned into personally. He was unwilling to lean into as much, right? So what would you say even to the old Dre who thought he was like winning by not being vulnerable? Like he's like, yeah, you know, this is, this is the way it's supposed to be. You're still a winner, (laughs) but (laughs) you can always be better. (laughs) Uh, Being vulnerable is actually helpful on so many levels. How? Like tell, tell me more over there. Like how has it helped you? It's giving me patience. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I can take some direction. Uh, No, but in all all honesty, being vulnerable, having more vulnerability, uh, it helped helped in marriage. It helped in getting closer with my wife. Um, It helped me getting closer with my friends and my family. It gave me the ability to say things that I was fearful of saying or things I avoided saying because I didn't want to, you know, disrupt the mood or cause a problem it taught me to treat myself the way i treat other people in a in a positive way and it also taught me to treat myself the way i should treat people it taught me to nourish and nurture relationships conversations how to hold people accountable and myself accountable as well which helped drastically even in my work life so i can honestly say my marriage got better my relationships got better. My finances got better. My mental health got better. My emotional health got better. And overall, I have more positives than negatives in learning to become more vulnerable. Give me an example of what vulnerability looks like to you. Like, Give me a specific example. For the people out there who are like, I'm vulnerable. I don't have to listen to this. I'm with him. Yes, be vulnerable. But they may not even, may not even be showing up for them in their life, right? So like, give me an example of what, what you mean. Uh, I recently had a job. I won't 
uh, bad mouth the company. <laughs> I should We're gonna protect no. the innocents. Yeah. You know, shots fired. <laughs> no. Uh, but no, recently I had a job and it did not go the way in which I wanted it to. Uh, we had it out at the job conversation and things. In the end, I decided to leave this company. But prior to it, I wanted to use wisdom and I shared with my wife how it made me feel. What happened exactly in full truth and full honesty. How did you feel? Uh, I was hurt. I was caught off guard. I was frustrated from it. I felt insulted. I felt angry. I felt, you know, a lot of pride in myself. Like, I should go back and tell them how I feel. But I realized, hey, Dre, that's not who you are. To remind yourself of who you are, to have that type of control, even in a moment where you feel the best thing to do is protect yourself, is, hey, if it's not meant for you, it's not meant for you. And being able to share this with my wife and get some of her wisdom, too, and some of her encouragement as well, because vulnerability shows that you can be strong and weak at the same time. Yeah. And sometimes it comes back with compassion and consideration and validation. My wife acknowledging the fact that what happened wasn't right and that I'm going to be OK, that we're going to be OK, that she still stuck by me and didn't, you know, blame me or was not frustrated or upset or angry or saying, well, it's your fault. She said, OK, well, we can work things out in time. And, you know, that that did help a thousand percent in me saying, you know, what, I'm going to get a job by the end of the month, you know, given it may have been a week or two away. But I determined in myself, like, you know what? I'm going to do all I can to to keep the job, to move forward in a positive way. And that's exactly what happened. And that's a good point that you bring up. Is sometimes we're on the end of the conversation where we're the one being vulnerable. But sometimes we're on the end of the conversation where someone is being vulnerable with us. Even in our situation, right? How do you identify? Um, how do you identify when I'm being vulnerable with you? I think that's the first part of the question. And the second part or the question is like, what do you do to protect my vulnerability in those moments? It's a two part question. <laughs> it's a two part question. <sighs> The way I identify in you being vulnerable, one, it always comes with a conversation. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I found it kind of funny. Or I was just thinking. <sighs> Stop. Good grief, Charlie Brown. The sigh when you take a deep breath. <laughs> or the simple, you're sitting down and I just happen to look and I say, what? <laughs> <laughs> so you feel like those are like, what I do when I'm about to say something vulnerable? Yeah, it's all over your face. You don't have a poker face. I do have a poker face. <laughs> po -po -po poker face, po -po poker face. As long as we don't sing it the way we hear it on the radio, we're good. I don't need this. I don't need this from anyone. Um, okay, and so what do you do to protect? someone else's vulnerability when they are i know a lot lately i've heard you say things all the time like man this guy texted me called me talked to me in the store and he was so vulnerable and i was just like like what do you do like when somebody because it can be awkward right like when somebody is just opens up to you and you're maybe not expecting it or catches you off guard like how do you protect that other person like sharing their vulnerabilities with you and stuff. Sympathize with the person, empathize with their situation, acknowledge their situation, and then express back to them if there's more that they want to share, that you're willing to hear it. Be a listening ear, a shoulder to lean on, a hug to embrace them. It may be they need someone to talk to or they just need someone to vent to. Do you no. feel like you do that with me? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I always think that I'm the husband. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, last question, but it's kind of one that I'm really interested in hearing your response to. Do you think it's possible to be vulnerable with the wrong person? Uh, vulner 
accountability is something you're supposed to do regardless. Although it's wisdom to understand who you can expose yourself to okay. and who you can't. Say more there. Uh, it's something you should do naturally because you should see everyone as as a as a friend, as a brother, as a sister, as someone that has something that can possibly help get you to the next place in life. Um, and in that, understanding that everyone doesn't have your best intent. So some people just want your vulnerability to use it as a weapon against you. But and you don't you don't know that, right? So you know what I mean? You don't know. So you initially walk in, you walk in with vulnerability on a hundred. You give it. So they ask you how you feel, you share it. You laugh through the through the good times, you cry together through the bad times. People will show you who they are in the end, and then from there you have to use your own discernment to make a decision. Uh, if you want to continue to grow and even in being vulnerable with that, if it does go a negative way, vulnerability will give you the ability to say to them, hey, what you did was not acceptable. I did not appreciate it. I did not like it. I want to remain friends with you, but we have to have boundaries and then boundaries can help you have better vulnerability. I don't know. Why do I disagree? I don't know why I disagree. That there is possibility to be vulnerable with the wrong person. Is there an yeah. approach in the wisdom? Like, okay, maybe I just need more clarity. Is there an approach in the wisdom that you feel that you can get an idea of? Is this somebody that I can be vulnerable with? But what do you think? I think the quality of a person's character will speak for itself. Yeah. And in that, seeing how they treat their friends, how they talk about people when they're not around. Are they saying good things about their friends and wholeheartedly meaning it? Or are they just the friend in your face and when you leave, it's someone different? You know, that uh, Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde analogy, uh, that on one side, they may appear to be these great positive people. On the other side, they may be negative. So are you vulnerable with strangers then? Yes. It's easier to be vulnerable with a stranger because they don't know you. You don't have a bond with them and you don't have to protect yourself against them. You can share a secret with a stranger and may never see them again. Well, if you don't feel a little, even the tiniest bit scared, is it really truly vulnerability then? Because, right? Like if vulnerability yes. is feeling exposed and feeling... I don't remember the definition, guys. <laughs> but feeling exposed, right? Mm -hmm. Like this feeling of feeling exposed in in the in the you can be vulnerable. Midst of possible danger. You can be vulnerable. You don't know that stranger. They may take your vulnerability and use it against you. You may share something that was about your childhood trauma that you never told anyone, and now they have this information. That's an extreme form of vulnerability. They may say it to someone that you know that you may not know. You don't know who a stranger knows. They may know someone closer to you in your inner circle. Do you feel like it's more of a cop-out to be vulnerable with someone that you may never see again versus being vulnerable with somebody who loves you deeply and who you'll have to face every day? Uh, I don't think it's a cop-out because I think if the person loves you that much and you love them that much and you guys have the, the relationship, there you can be vulnerable with that person you wouldn't want to share that with a stranger you would give that to them a vulnerability there's something that is a gift in vulnerability right and so letting someone in deeper letting someone in just a little peeling the back that onion layer for someone and i think there's a there's a sense of sharing something deep or being vulnerable with a stranger but i don't know if it's as scary, I just don't know if it's as scary than, you know, you know, telling something like telling your husband, Hey, our, I wish we were more connected and being that open and vulnerable and saying like, Hey, um, or even, Hey, I don't know if, if we're going to work out. I don't know if this marriage is going to last. We're in a place that, you know, we're, struggling so hard that I don't know if this marriage is going to last and telling a stranger that like, Hey, I don't know if my marriage is going to last. And then being like, Oh, really cool. Walking away versus telling a friend 
who's going to ask you more questions, who's going to feel for you, who's going to care about you, who's going to love you, telling your spouse who that might scare, you know, all of that. Isn't that, isn't there a difference there? There is a difference. There's a level of security and respect and bond that you have with the person that you share something with like that. Uh, so it is different. And that is true. It is different from sharing that with a stranger and versus, say, a close friend. Because I think there's a lot of people who would rather rattle off their inner innermost being to any passerby. But when it comes to talking about their feelings with their friends that are closest to them or their spouses or their boyfriends or whatever it may be, their girlfriends, they would rather keep it to themselves because they know that that would mean something, you know? And I just want to be here for the people. You hear me? I just want to be here for the people and say, hey, we want you to be vulnerable in a way that's going to make you better. And if you're not, I always say this, if you want to have better relationships, you have to get your butt kicked through vulnerability. Like it should not be easy. Like think about telling somebody that you love them. Think about, um, having to ask someone out on a date. Like we talked about earlier, like the level of vulnerability of this may crash and burn. Like this may haunt me, but I'm going to risk it because if you're not risking it, what are you doing? Right. Right. There is a, a deeper level of intimacy that comes with being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But vulnerability can be on different levels. There are different levels of vulnerability because the different levels of vulnerability go hand in hand with the different levels of intimacy. You can be vulnerable with your friend, with your best friend, but maybe the way you're vulnerable with your best friend is not the same way in which you're vulnerable with your husband or your significant other. So there are levels to it. But, and being vulnerable is being able to share the difficult things and still come out in a positive way. That will bring the fear. You want to tell your best friend that everyone else is not the problem. It's their actions. Mm -hmm. But you have that fear of, I don't want to hurt my friend. I don't want them to take it the wrong way. But if you do these things in love, vulnerability is actually freedom. Vulnerability is a proactive step instead of a reactive I step. I like that. I like that. Hmm. Or even, hey, maybe my friend's not the problem. Maybe I am. That's deep. That's always a agree. possibility. But I agree. It's freedom. There is freedom in it. And I think we've found it in exploring vulnerability, even in marriage. Um, and I don't know how you feel. Like, I think I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear, like, what's your fear? What's your fear of going there? What's your fear of going deep in vulnerability? And are you taking any steps? Like, are you taking any steps to transition? I hope so. I hope that this podcast episode challenges you a little bit more to just think about, A, like, am I being vulnerable? Am I just telling myself I'm being vulnerable and I'm really not? Who's the last person I even tried to be more vulnerable with in order to connect? Does it feel risky? Does it feel scary? Like, am I constantly putting myself in a position to feel that risk because if you're not taking their that risk like there really is no reward so let me know how you feel we talked about what being vulnerable is we talked about how it shows up we talked about what it takes um you met my husband <laughs> you yeah. met dre the beautiful baldy over here theater of the mind um with a very wow. nice beard might i add beard gang beard gang 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 yeah. Um, and we want to hear from you, whether that be on the podcast episode page, check it out over there, comment, um, whether that be through email, uh, 
we want to hear from you. I want to hear about your vulnerability journey and maybe, uh, maybe we could talk about it on the podcast a little bit. Who knows? So head over to the podcast episode page. It is unleash the T H a niche.com. That's unleash the niche.com or email in at laugh at unleash the niche.com. Uh, that's laugh at unleash the that's T H a niche.com. Email us in comment. I want to hear from you. And yeah, thank you for tuning in once again to the podcast. We are so excited. We, me, me, my husband on this particular episode, but I am. Thank you for supporting um, and showing up because these are some crazy topics and I want to keep digging in and I want to continue to hear what you guys are interested and excited about hearing about. So with that being said, anything else you want to say, Jay? Walk it out, y'all. <laughs> Walk it out. And maybe we can impact the world or something. Okay. Bye. Bye.